Hey folks, welcome back. For good reason, I'm standing here under the sawmill shelter today. This is sort of the real test for the sawmill shelter and whether it'll keep out rain. And although I didn't have too many doubts, I was in the back of my mind questioning some of my uh, build practices and whether it would keep the weather out. And I'm happy to report that if you look down here, everything is bone dry. So the issue I had before, and you guys probably have seen it, was this big opening here at the front of my sawmill. Because the opening was so tall, it was allowing rain to sort of blow in here and still get this general area wet. Well, with that new addition of the overhang and the steel roof on there, I can tell you that it's completely dry all the way on the deck here. So that's kind of nice. The other thing you'll notice, it's even dry a little bit down there. You guys see where I'm pointing there, down here? It's even dry down there a little bit. So you can see the raindrops here falling. They land at the edge of the root at the edge of the roof there but this area even off the deck is kind of dry which is convenient you guys also would have seen in one of my most recent videos the addition of the gable end siding this right here this is turning out to be a pretty good addition as well because up until recently it was getting soaked right about where i'm standing now what i will tell you is rain is still making its way in a little bit as you can tell by the top of the bunks but I think I got a solution to that coming up real soon. But for the most part, this is keeping out a big portion of the rain and snow, which is forecast later tonight. With this sawmill shelter keeping out nearly 99% of the weather, I'm just about ready to get it back into full operation. So what I'm gonna do today is finally actually put some braces up, get rid of some of the temporary ones. And you guys can see some of the temporary ones down here. You can also see along the back, those are temporary. I wanna get rid of those and put up the ones that are really gonna stay in place. And I also wanna get the floor cleaned up. I brought out here my secret weapon, and this is probably no secret if you've been around the channel for a while. This is my Husqvarna 580. This thing is a lifesaver. This thing is used for a variety of tasks. To be honest with you, I barely ever use it to get rid of leave debris. Uh, I use it mostly to clean things. So I'm gonna use this today to clean out the deck here. And this is probably where it'll be living most of its life out here at the sawmill shack because this thing I have a feeling is really going to clean this in a hurry and really going to do a good job. So we're going to get the deck cleaned off, get the braces up. And I got a few other uh, tidbits of information for you as to what you can expect coming down the pipe for the sawmill shelter. I got a few other ideas that I think is going to make this place even better and make it one of those sawmill shelters where you just want to hang out at. So welcome back guys. I can look around and see lots of things I got to do. So I'm going to get down to it. Let's go. I tell you that thing is a weapon i was pretty much at half throttle most of that time and if i open it up i'm probably going to blow the lumber clear off the sawmill deck anyways that thing made a beautiful job happen in a hurry so i definitely think that's going to be hanging around for a while as you can tell we're ready to get back to work here so let's get some braces up
Now you guys may laugh at this, you may not, I don't know, but uh, I've worked with a lot of people and many people say the term good enough or the phrase good enough. And when it comes to building, I don't like to use the word good enough. It's either good or it's not good. Good enough is like that gray, gray area in between. Good enough means that there could have been something done to make it better. And if I've got the time and maybe the means and the material and the equipment, why would I not build something that's good? Comes down to things like this. You guys see the angles on these braces? I want those angles to be identical because when I look at it, I want to know that I've done as best as I can do. Good enough, well, that doesn't really fit with me. So you guys may laugh, you may not, but as you see me building here, make sure you understand that I do spend the extra time because I care about what it looks like. I care about how it functions and it's either good or it's not good. And I want to make sure it's as good as I can do. Just so you guys know, the lubrication tank is unhooked right now. You'll notice the tube hanging down. That's because it was freezing over the past two days. Uh, so the, the tank, I didn't want to have uh, water in there, pure water, and have it break the tank and valve and that. There's no water in there. I'm not using lubrication for this little cut. Making custom material, custom lumber is why you have a sawmill, so kind of fortunate that way.
Well guys, as you can see, the storm is just about rolling in here. My red pines are just about breaking off and the snow is falling in. So that is probably my cue to get out of here. I know this is built well. I've done all the bracing today and hopefully you guys, uh, you guys took something away from that. Maybe if you have some additional tips for me bracing wise, you can share it down below. I think next time around what I got to do is I've got to go ahead and get this place cleaned up because there's all kinds of wood everywhere. And as I, uh, as I speak and the snow falls, I know that that wood pile will quickly disappear. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to double check to make sure I haven't missed any braces. I know for certain I've missed that corner there. I want to put something there and same thing here. But I ran out of uh, construction adhesive, so I got to get more of that. The other thing I'm going to talk about uh, maybe next day is getting the log bunks in place. I've got some lumber for that, so I just have to get it built. As do I have to build some off-cut bunks or some place to put the offcuts to cut it into firewood ultimately offcuts become piles like that minus the logs look underneath of it and the third thing i may end up doing next time is a little surprise and that surprise is going to help with some blowing snow despite being in the middle of a forest here there is likelihood of having some snow blow in on me and so i got a little surprise in store and i think it's going to really help with that this has turned out to be a really good project definitely one i've enjoyed you know, it's been hard work, but as anything in life, uh, hard work brings reward. And I think the reward is definitely coming around this time. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you being here. If you haven't done so already, please check out the playlist. There's a number of episodes in there all the way from, well, breaking dirt all the way up to raising these posts here. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you're not brand new, welcome back. And for everybody out there watching, we'll see you next time.